Warning. The sound effects used in the duration of the episode may cause feelings of anxiety or stress. Please be cautious while driving as some loud sounds may startle you. That sound has been haunting you in the village for weeks. Something comes by every week or so overnight and ransacks the village. Whatever it is, it only targets the crops and the animals of the village, only leaving huge hoof prints in its wake. There it is, the same rooster, day after day, your wake-up call. As frustrating as it is to get out of bed, it's important. You are the village's best farmer and it's time to check and see if your crops are still there. You get changed, wash your face, and prepare to check on your livelihood. You arrive at your first stop, the barn. You open the old door and are met with the sounds of various animals in their pens. You let out a sigh of relief. The animals in your barn are still there, but there's one more place where there are more animals, the outside pen. Step by step, you make your way through the barn, out the gate, and down the short walk. As you approach the outside pen, your heart sinks. The usual sound of goats cannot be heard. And as you make your way over the slight bend, you see the outside pen with no animals. A bead of sweat drops down your head, and your adrenaline starts to kick in. You start sprinting towards your farm's crops. You run as fast as you can, all the way across your property and almost to the other side of the village. Nothing. Whatever crops are left are squashed and unsalvageable. You close your eyes and lift your head up to the sky. This can't be it, you say to yourself. At this point, most of the town is awake and followed you to see what the commotion was about. More crops got stolen? One villager asks. Another one remarks. How could you let this happen? The townspeople became irate quickly. No matter the slander or insults, you don't move or say a word. Until... How are you going to fix this? Another villager complained. You turn around and respond calmly. We... We are going to fix this. This is something that I can't handle alone. Our village future is at risk of starvation. Grab what weapons you can. I need the hunters and those with the most weapon experience to follow me. Leaving the village behind, a group consisting of five decide to go and hunt down this beast. Welcome to Campfire Stories, a world of all things legendary and mythical, putting you, the listener, at the center. Each week, your host, Brady Montag and Joshua Cummings, make it their mission to tell you a story you haven't heard before. Episode 3, Walkman Ganji Aragondi. What is Walkman Ganji Aragondi? Long ago, the Wakmanganji was a colossal boar that terrorized villages and valleys of the Garo Hills in northeastern India. It would simply be a disservice to just describe this boar as colossal. It's been described as the biggest and mightiest creature in the world, as tall as a mountain. It's a vicious creature. It will kill and eat anything in its way. Crops, animals, and even humans. The size of this monster alone strikes fear into the hearts of any who see it. However, sometimes people don't even realize they've encountered the Wakmanganchi until it's too late. How does one overlook a creature of that size? Something that big isn't unnoticeable. Well, the Wakmanganchi doesn't just look like a regular boar. On its back is what is basically a forest. Thick clumps of bamboo, vast amounts of grass, and numerous streams are found there. The Wakmanganji is so large, and has such a thick forest on its back, it's easily mistaken for a large mountain. 
when it wakes from its slumber and goes to explore and feed, its seven heads easily tear up the hills and valleys looking for food. That's right, seven heads, each head with one eye and humongous tusks. Because of its size, nothing of normal proportions can ever hope to defeat this beast. In years long gone, only monstrous creatures of similar size and build could even come close to standing up to the Wakman Ganshi. Days. It's taking days to follow these hoofprints. Nobody knows how long it will take. Even the hunters of the village are at a loss. Nobody has hunted something like this before. As far as tracking it, it's not difficult. One could see these prints from miles away. The most taxing aspect is the time. As the days go by, the danger becomes increasingly more present. The forests of northeastern India are not for the faint of heart. All right. Let's rest here for the night, a hunter says. You and the rest agree. The group has been traveling all day with almost no rest. One of the villagers comes down from a slight overlook nearby. Hey guys, I've lost track of the hoofprints. Everyone is confused. You've been following the same tracks for days in the same direction. Now they're gone? You chime in. It's dark out. Maybe we won't see them until daybreak. The group settles in for the night, the wind bustling through the nearby bamboo trees and the sound of a nearby stream gives a soothing noise that lulls you all to sleep. The sun finally rises. A nearby rooster crows, waking the group up from a deep sleep. Out of nowhere, one of the members says with a stammered voice, Uh, guys, look down the hill. You and the rest of the group get together and look down a hill in the direction from where the group had come from. Somebody says, We're moving? How? Nobody is sure how it's possible, but the forest that the group set up camp in was moving, leaving humongous footprints behind, the footprints you've been tracking. The group starts quickly packing up. Just then, the movement, the footsteps, stop, and everything goes silent. The monster stood in one position. The beast, out of nowhere, starts violently shaking. The Walkman Ganchi knows that there are intruders. The shaking becomes so violent that everyone begins holding on to whatever they can. Roots, trees, rocks. Anything that can keep yourself from being sent plummeting from the great beast's back. One by one, each of the men of the small group gets thrown off violently into the air. You're the last one. You're holding on tight to a bamboo tree that's rooted deep in the ground. You suddenly hear a loud snap, and before you can react, you find yourself pinned under the weight of a fallen tree. The shaking stops. You let go of the bamboo, trying to free yourself from the great tree laying across your legs. After struggling for what feels like hours, you look ahead to where the tree had fallen from. As you look towards the opening, your heart sinks as your brain attempts to make sense of what's before you. It's hard to make out through the bright reflection in your eyes. Then the realization hits you. What lies before you is the ocean. You've only seen it once before as a child. And now it's getting closer, and closer, and closer. Step by step, the Wakman Ganji marches towards the large expanse of water. And as quickly as it arrived to your village, it decided to leave, going into the ocean with you on its back, never to be seen again. Thank you for listening to this episode of Campfire Stories. This episode was produced and edited by Joshua Cummings and written by your hosts, Brady Montag and Joshua Cummings. The warning, opening, and closing statements are voiced by me, Sam Montag. The sound effects and music used in this episode were produced by Artlist.io and BBC Sound Effects. Information regarding the topic today has been provided by a book of creatures.com. If you have any questions about this week's topic or would like to suggest a legend or myth for us to cover, reach out to campfiremyths at gmail.com. Tune in next week as Brady and Josh cover 
Derek Grossman.